Good morning. Uh, checking in to share some updates. We passed a number of bills, three bills, off the Senate floor yesterday. Uh, it was quite late when we finished, so I'm uh, coming in this morning to talk about those. So uh, three bills, uh, I'm going to be uh, a bit concise. There's a whole lot in those, so I am not going to cover ev everything. So if you have other questions, feel free to reach out. Happy to chat about that, but I'm going to hit some of the highlights from the bills that we passed yesterday. So the first bill was uh, combined. It was the energy and utilities finance bill that was combined with the environment and climate uh, finance bill. So on the energy and utilities side, um, really this bill, um, really the, it demonstrates our commitment to exploring all available options for clean, renewable, and carbon-free energy. It includes component for development of renewable energy, uh, provisions for a clean energy transition, getting to that uh, clean energy by uh, 2040, uh, reducing our carbon footprint, and resiliency, um, just encouraging energy efficiency planning um, all around. And so really important steps that really is the, the way we get to that clean energy by 2040. Uh, really proud of this bill. On the environment and climate side, uh, a number of provisions there. One really important one is protecting Minnesotans from pollution, especially, especially uh, PFAS. So those are those forever chemicals uh, that are all around us in many cases. This takes uh, important steps um, to really um, take a look at those cumulative impacts that are having uh, an effect on Minnesotans' health. We heard um, really um, moving uh, testimony in committees uh, from folks who have been affected by this. Uh, one young woman, Amara, who lost her life, she died uh, last week um, from cancer related to PFAS. And her family was up in the gallery as we were passing this bill. Um, it really touching and moving and important that we get this done. Uh, another piece of this bill is being responsible stewards of our natural environment and, and resources. And so um, really this helps move us forward to protect native species, removing invasive species like invasive carp, um, taking steps towards uh, curtailing the spread of CWD uh, in our deer population, a, a number of things uh, that are important. And then the last piece I'll mention here just is investing in our outdoor spaces. So in Minnesota, you know, we have beautiful, wonderful, natural outdoor spaces uh, that we enjoy. And so just protecting those spaces. Uh, the next bill we passed was the Veterans Bill, uh, and there was an intentional effort to have this be a standalone bill. So proud that it was. Uh, this includes things like it's re really is a historic standalone budget. Um, it provides $128 million in new funding for veterans, military affairs, uh, which is the largest increase in our Minnesota history. It includes provisions um, for mental health and homelessness uh, for veterans, almost $15 million to fight, to fight homelessness in veterans, so really, really important. Also expands access to health, uh, mental health care for veterans. Uh, it includes uh, raising baseline funding for veterans' homes across our state. Uh, we have five veterans' homes, so it includes uh, funding for those spaces, which is excellent. Also includes provisions for a working group um, to provide oversight on the care model and staffing structures uh, in our in our veterans' homes, which um, there have been concerns raised uh, in the facilities in Hastings and Minneapolis, and so uh, it takes action on that. So I'm really proud of this historic bill. Um, it's a great bill and happy to pass that. Uh, the last bill we passed last night was uh, also a combined bill, state and local government combined with elections. Um, so the state and local government I'll uh, talk about first. Uh, this um, budget really invests in essential services after years of underfunding. So it provides fiduciary oversight. Um, it expands powers to regulate, manage, um, and cancel government grants um, to really crack down on waste and fraud. It takes, takes a good look at that. Uh, it includes measures for consumer protection. Uh, it increases funding for the Attorney General's office. Uh, who has um, oversight over that. So important provisions there. Uh, it includes funding for technology and accessibility, uh, which will improve user experience uh, on some really outdated government websites. So really good uh, improvements there, as well as provisions for cybersecurity. Uh, and lastly, this is really a, a person-centered bill. Um, it creates new councils on LGBTQIA and youth, a legislative task force on aging to help meet 
uh, the unique the needs of our unique population uh, in regards to policy making. So a great uh, bill. Uh, happy to vote yes for that. And then the last section was our elections bill, and I am very proud to serve on the elections committee. So I was very proud to help put this bill together and pass it off the floor last night. A number of really good provisions in this bill. Uh, I'll talk about a few of them. It provides uh, protection for election officials. So we have seen um, threats and intimidation across the country and here in Minnesota for the wonderful folks who are neighbors and friends and family who um, administer our elections locally. So it provides uh, protections for them. Um, ranked choice voting uh, is something I know in my district I hear about a lot. Um, so it includes a task force to look at ranked choice voting and what that, uh, what would be needed, uh, the, the pros and cons, um, and just to, to take a, a deeper dive look into what that would look like. Very excited for that. Uh, it includes provisions for polling place accessibility. So making sure that our neighbors with disabilities are able uh, to vote at our polling places. It provides a public subsidy increase. And so this is important and, and is long overdue. Uh, so for those running for office, being able to have some of that publicly funded. And that means that running for office is more accessible to more people. As I talk to folks uh, who are thinking about running for office, the number one sort of worry or concern is, gosh, I, don't, I can't afford that. Um, and so having that public subsidy expands the pool of who um, can run for office and it allows people running for office to focus on conversations with potential uh, constituents uh, versus wealthy donors. So a really important step um, in improving our election process. Uh, and then the last piece, uh, two more pieces I'll mention. One is early voting. This creates a true early voting system uh, that is clear with consistent standards. You know, we want to make it easier for people to vote, not harder. And so having that opportunity for early voting is really important for those who, um, you know, can't get to the polling place maybe on election day, working odd hours, you have kids, you might get sick on that day. Um, want to be sure that we have lots of options for people to be able to vote. The last thing I'll mention uh, is education uh, funding dollars for, uh, you know, earlier this year we passed Restore the Vote. So folks who are uh, formerly incarcerated with a felony now have the um, ability and, and right to vote. That's upwards of 55,000 Minnesotans. Uh, and so educational grants going uh, to those communities to be sure that they have the information they need um, will avoid confusion. You know, we want everybody to be able to vote who is eligible to do so. So really um, sharing that information and getting education out there. So I was very happy to vote for all of those bills yesterday. They passed off the Senate floor. And so I'm um, really excited for the good work that is happening. We are in for a long session today, I'm sure. We're passing three bills off the floor. So I will be back uh, soon uh, in the next uh, day, probably tomorrow, uh, to talk about those three bills as well. So if you have questions, as I said, reach out anytime. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.